Okay, so if there's anything we can all relate to, it's that growing up is a fucking pain in the ass. I've never had to deal with anything more stressful and seriously I got burnt out already when I was 21 years old. So this video goes out to you, the millennial, and it goes out to being a survival kit for growing up in the 21st century. So what are the challenges being a millennial? Starting with number one, constant surveillance. Number two, terrible schooling. Number three, the gaming versus real life slash work culture. Number four, sensitivity. And number five, homogeneity. What I mean with constant surveillance is that never before has a generation been so watched. Watched through phones, watched through selfies, watched through social media use, monitored for everything they do, say, write, and every single thing they express online and at school and at work. Like, you can say that this has both goods and bads, and uh, the worst of it all is that it relates to this new growing problem of homogeneity. When everyone is watched, everyone is also watching. And when everyone is watching, everyone is mimicking and mirroring. Meaning we are creating a culture where everyone is starting to look, act and think the same way. Now if there's any problem with this, it is that if everyone wants to work at the same workplace and do the same things and in the same way, then everyone is going to have to compete with everyone. And this is only reinforced by our school system. Our school system wants everyone to have the exact same skills, to know the exact same things, and to have the exact same response to solving problems, learning, and working. Now this was less of a problem in the 20th century because back then all the workplaces looked more or less the same. All workplaces demanded more or less the same things. But today society has gotten increasingly specialized and it requires extremely special and individualized skills. So if you look at reality you can see that schools are producing workers with more or less the same skills and traits competing for workplaces that are and need different things. And what workplaces are starting to complain about is that nobody is adjusted for their particular line of work. And I've seen politicians respond differently to this. Some politicians say that we should create works that are more adjusted for these educated people, where other people say we should change our education to fit better with what the workforce requires. And yes, the first politician is an idiot. If you hear a politician say you need more simple jobs, fire them. I'm serious, kick them out of office. So what can we do about our schools? Number one, we need to stop standardization. Number two, we need to give equal resources to succeed, but different standards of success. And number three, we need to remove school books. What I mean with step one is stop projects like Common Core, stop standardized exams, stop standardized results, stop teaching students that there are only one way to succeed in society. School is teaching us that if we want to succeed in the workplace, we need to succeed in schools. We need good grades, good education, and higher education. But often, we are finding that high education is not enough to secure good jobs. My point can be summarized in step two. Give all schools equal resources to help their kids and to give the kids equal abilities to succeed but provide different standards and metrics of success. Don't just rely on tests, but also provide optional routes for people to succeed in school. And yeah, if number three made you go, what? Then that was the point in itself. We are learning that we need a higher standard of critical thinking, and school books discourage critical thinking. We are giving students 
set school books with set chapters to read that will tell the students what the right answer to different problems are. But typically, as we learn with the internet and with globalization, there are many different right answers. And we need to learn to evaluate different answers, different ways to think about history, different ways to think about politics, different ways to think about economics. And we need to grade students on their ability to evaluate sources based on how accurate they are and to see and compare and contrast different sources to see which sources provide the best information. We are giving students prepackaged foolproof information and we are expecting them to simply rehearse and believe this information without any skepticism. And really point three is bigger than that. Point three involves giving students the ability to Google during exams, to prioritize teaching kids to access and use knowledge in an accurate and critical way, rather than teaching kids to purely access and put out information. At school, you are being spoon-fed the right answers and told to spit it out. At the workplace, the workers, the employees, don't know what the right answer is, and that's why they hired you to provide it for them. Now, if there's anything we must acknowledge, it's that millennials grew up with Nintendo, with gaming. We grew up in gaming culture, and the difference between gaming culture and real life and work culture is that gaming culture provides a systematic and gradual increase of difficulty. As soon as you finish and improve at the task, you get to the next level. And each level provides a gradual but steady increase of difficulty. But real life is different from this. Real life instead suddenly goes from being really easy to suddenly becoming super difficult to then becoming really easy to then becoming super difficult again. Beyond this, gaming culture provides the player with constant instructions arrows on the road pointing you where to go next and clear indications of how to solve a problem if you get stuck. Where real life gives often unclear, contradictory or bad directions for how to solve problems. And finally, where gaming culture provides immediate gratification and rewards for getting the right answer, often Real life, in real life, you don't know if you made the right answer until maybe years after you made the decision. I mean, it can take five years before you get a job from your line of education, but when you do get a job, you might get an amazing wage and great responsibilities and great opportunities. But you don't know this. You don't know if you made the right decision or not. You're given an internship, but you have no idea if that internship is going to give any money or any real rewards. You're given a work or a job, but you're not sure if that's going to lead to any promotions or any long-term sustainability. And yeah, I know, to some extent, that's fucked up. And yeah, if there is anything I can recommend to employees, it's to give workers privacy. Give uh, workers privacy and the freedom to explore ideas on their free time. Give them empty spaces where they can define what they want to do. If you want ideas, if you want creativity at your workplace, if you want diversity at your workplace with diverse workers with unique skills and personal identities, then provide privacy. Note that this is different if you run a McDonald's or a franchise-like business where you simply want your workers to execute a clear idea and to perform according to already defined expectations. That's when you want constant surveillance. And as an employer, consider giving and providing more opportunities for long-term projects. Don't expect immediate rewards from what your workers do, but give them time to provide results. Typically, the projects that will give the biggest results to your workplace are the ones that take the longest time and require the most investments in your workers and in their project. Short-term projects and project budgets discourage creativity and big picture thinking. 
Now, there are certain environments where short-term projects are valuable. For example, environments that have a lot of constantly new problems coming up, new customers, new clients, new challenges, like a journalistic environment. But short-term projects are overvalued at, for example, universities where you want to promote long-term and big-picture thinking. And finally, point number three you should look at. Show workers what impact they make. Consider giving clear ways to demonstrate to your employees what they give you, what they provide for you, what they offer you. It's been said that today's millennial generation wants to know what they do is good for the environment, that it helps people, that it provides services to refugees, to people suffering around the world. People want to feel that what they do help other people. And that brings us to the number one struggle for employers. Employers feel that their workers are not conscientious enough. Their workers are lazy. They're not working hard enough. They are not putting enough energy into what they do. And here's the thing. It's been shown that money has gotten increasingly ineffective at motivating workers. The more you pay someone, the less likely they are to do a good job at what they do. The traditional incentives such as money, beer, parties, has so far been shown to, do a, to be ineffective at the today's generation. True this, young people drink less today and they <laughs> do less drugs. And yeah, they are less interested in money. So what can you do to make your workers more conscientious? Well, you can focus on storytelling, having your workers create stories and YouTube channels and blogs where they talk about what they do and why they do it, to establish values, to show statistics, to give people rewards and achievements for what they do, to provide progress like games do, to provide people and environments and social environments that inspire people to promote ethics and virtues among your workers, to promote personality and character in the people around you, to set clear and fun rules, to establish games and challenges to push workers forward. Conscientiousness grows in a worker that feels that what they do is important and that it has value. When something matters to us, we think more about how we do it. We take and invest more energy into doing it right. And we put more effort into making sure it has some form of personal branding, <laughs> some kind of significance to us. Now, finally, we have the issue of sensitivity and why millennials are more sensitive. And the answer is simple. Because we don't have any war right now. We haven't grown up in the Cold War. We haven't grown up with the feeling that there is an imminent chance of nuclear war. And it was only a few decades ago where people were having nightmares about ni uh, nukes falling down at their homes. Of losing their families. Of seeing total destruction. It was only a few decades ago where people grew up in a world with blatant racism and segregation, where there were stores, cafes, pubs that were locked to black communities. And this has created a generation gap where young people are more sensitive than older generations. It's been well established in society that the more accustomed you are to growing up seeing violence, the more accurate and ethical you think it is to act and behave in a way that is aggressive or violent towards other people. Today people care more than they did before about violence, they care more about slurs, they care more about hatred, even when it's of a smaller degree than it used to be. And this is also why a lot of us grow up, uh, have grown up with the belief that the world has gotten more violent, more hateful and more racist, even though if we look at the statistics overall, things have gotten better. And yeah, there is a problem with people, instead of engaging in real problems, engage in fights with windmills. There is a big problem with people fighting against problems that aren't real, problems that are more or less perceived, rather than against real problems. 
But the surprising reason why this problem exists is because of a lack of confidence and a lack of power. People are feeling unconfident at work, in real life, in their, over their surroundings. They are feeling a lack of power over their community or over the global situation of the world. And to avoid dealing with that sense of lack of power, they engage in struggles against things that feel easier to handle. We invent simple enemies, simple problems, when we want to avoid dealing with real problems and real enemies, enemies that feel far more difficult to face. And yeah, all of this brings up one question. What is my real problem? Is it unemployment? Is it globalization? Is it isolation? Is it climate change? Is it discrimination? I mean, problems today have gotten bigger than ever before. We live in with this kind of global consciousness where we are supposed to engage ourselves in matters that are happening all across the world. Issues that were previously individual or national at least, or maybe regional hopefully, have today gotten, region, have gotten multinational. It's the EU, it's the world we're talking about. And dealing with that and managing that can feel so overwhelming. And that's also why I see people inventing easy problems, things they can face and deal with rather than the real issue. And yeah, you have to think of ways to make these problems possible for you. You have to find ways to make these challenges possible for you as an individual. You have to find ways to work together with other people to solve problems that are bigger than you. You have to find ways to make problems smaller to find out what you can do as an individual to make a difference in the bigger whole. And all of this relates back to conscientiousness. You have to find ways to make problems possible. And if there is one solution I can offer you right now as a millennial is, is learn programming. Programming is as essential to you as a person today as voting rights was in the 20th century. Programming is the modern version of learning English. And yeah, I know the situation sucks for millennials right now. I know it's hard with jobs. I know it's difficult with everything. I have by no means figured out how to live in this millennial world. I don't think anyone else has either though, so... Perhaps the best thing we can do is invent ways to be a millennial. Because, I mean, we can be as annoyed as we want over what kind of generation we have fostered, but the only solution we have now is how can we create a world for these people? I mean, society, the whole world is for human beings, not for machines, not for the old system. The old system is only good if it provides services and values for people. So what can we do to make the world better for you? What can you do to make the world better for you? I believe programming is the answer. Programming solutions, replacements for the old systems. But I'm sure there are millions of other solutions too. So what are yours? Was it, what is it you can do right now to give yourself more power? What is it you can do to survive better as a millennial?